Alrighty you guys, so today in this video we are out here again today and we're going to be doing some bluegill fishing. Bluegill and crappie. This time we've got a pink water bug. It's a little bit darker out here right now. It's uh, a lot of muddy water. Clouds have kind of slowly dissipated. It was raining a lot this morning. But the clouds have kind of gone off and disappeared. So hopefully we'll be able to get some fish, maybe. I'm going to try it. Hopefully the wind is not too bad for you guys. Fishing the same uh, setup that we were in the last fishing video, I believe. Uh, we're throwing a just a normal three-quarter inch bobber, a little styrofoam bobber, with a 180th ounce jig head. We've got four-pound line with the code white spinning rod by 13 fishing. Ooh, something just came up out of my bobber. Yep, there's a fish. Crappie. And we've got a Shakespeare Securus reel. Come here, dude. Oh, he ate it good, too. Oh, come here, man. There we go. Nice crappie. Has it kind of in that spot where it's hard to unhook them. Alrighty, there he is. Got him unhooked. Boom, he is gone. There we go. Pretty darn quick. Something swirled on my bobber. I assume it was probably that same fish, but right before that fish bit, I seen something swirl around my bobber, so. It might be moving. It's a lot colder right now. The, uh, the weather it's got being kind of stupid considering it is early May and it's supposed to get down to like 32 tomorrow night I think is what I heard like what in the hell it's supposed to be May it's supposed to be like in the 70s if not in the 80s why is it why is it getting cold there's no reason for this but whatever weather's going to do what the weather does so can't really change it Ooh, there was a bite right there. Pulled my bait down a little bit. So there is fish up in that shallow right in front of me. I was wondering if there would be or not. Apparently there's at least one because it bit. Sometimes you can get a big bluegill or sometimes a crappie or a hybrid out of these sticks right here, but right now it doesn't seem like they're wanting to bite. I'd say they're probably more out in the deeper water like that crappie there was. Just fishing the same old tactic. Definitely one of my favorite tactics to catch bluegill and crappie is just a small bobber small jig head and a little doxer company water bug sometimes i'll throw a tadpole but here lately this water bug has been doing a lot of good catching a lot of fish on it There's something right over there just moved don't know if it'll bit yep yep it bit bit pretty quick too i only moved the bobber one time Nice crappie. Really nice crappie, actually. Nice fat. Oh. There we go. Good one. There we go. Nice crappie. I'd say it's probably a good 10, 11 inch long crappie. All right. 
And for those that live on good crappie lakes and stuff that are like, oh, that's not very big, that's pretty good size for around here. You don't catch a whole lot too many that size around here, especially in small ponds like this. That's why it's fun to have a pond like this where I can test out my new baits and stuff in. Oh, there was a bite almost instantly again, as soon as it hit the water. Well, there's a seed on it. Damn oak seeds or whatever the hell these are. I'm sure somebody knows what these little nasty critters are. I, don't, I mean, they ain't even a critter, but they're fucking annoying. I know that. Get all over your bait. There's another one. Seems like the crappie are stacked up out deep. That's a pretty small one, actually. Wow, that's a really small one compared to the last one. Yeah, that's that's probably only about eight incher, maybe, if that. Now we got her all tangled up again. Amazes me how well I can do that sometimes. Don't even don't even do anything and somehow I still tangled it up. Alright. I'm still tangled up down there. Something moved around that water or that uh, duck pond thing. Damn it! Okay, now I have it finally fixed. Just kept getting more and more tangled. I don't know how or why, but it did. Seems like the crappie are out more in the deeper, kind of out in the middle of the pond, just suspended out there. I've had a couple different bites. Oh, there's a big fish come up and ate my bobber. Another one of them seed things on my damn bait. Let's see if he'll bite the uh, the water bug this time around. Basically, the, uh, the tactic here is just jiggling the bobber kind of quick. You want to just to make the bobber move. You don't really want to do any you know, pops or anything too special with it. You just kind of want to make the bobber kind of just jiggle across the surface. And that bait is down there doing all kinds of things. Get them fish to bite. This bait, this water bug, has so much action to it. It's incredible how much action it has. Just sitting there sometimes, it can. you can see it has a lot of action to it. The tails are moving. You just kind of drop it down and up and down, just vertical jigging it. It's got a lot of action down there. I've caught some pretty big bass, or not bass, but uh, pretty big bluegill and crappie. I caught, I caught a pretty good bass the other day doing that, right over there by them reeds. I was uh, vertical jigging that pink water bug around them reeds for some reason. About a two and a half pound bass bit it. Bit like a bluegill when I set the hook. Big old bass head come flying out of the water. Scared the hell out of me. Wasn't expecting it to be a bass, that's for sure. Let's see if we can cast over here by these reeds and see if there's any bluegill chilling out over here. Usually there's a couple pretty good bluegill that like to hang out around these reeds. But it's kind of like their little home. You can hardly ever catch them though because they always see me walking up. Nope, doesn't look like they're going to bite. Probably already swam off and ain't going to be messing with me now that I'm over here. You guys are interested in these Doc's Lure Company baits like this water bug, uh, the tadpoles, one inch boomstick, the one inch grub, all the incredibly good crappie and bluegill baits that I make here at Doc's Lure Company. Go check out the Facebook channel or the Facebook page, not channel. Uh, go check out the Facebook page, Doc's Lure Company. All the new baits and stuff go up there. All the new colors. All kinds of stuff. All the fish pictures that I don't get on video go up there as well. So go check it out. 
a lot of cool stuff on there a lot of cool pictures that you won't be able to see something just swirled on my line probably a crappie seems like the crappie love to hang out in the deeper water kind of just suspended out here and then the bluegill typically sit up in the shallows up by the reeds and the sticks and stuff like that at least that's what I've noticed yeah something just moved out there by that duck decoy don't know what it was probably a crappie Ooh, there's some stuff moving over there got another damn seed thing on my bait and things are annoying See if we can make a far cast out there where that fish was moving. A little bit too close that cast. I doubt I'll get a bite on it. Might though. And fish were moving over towards that bank. Get closer to the bank. See if there's anything by this water that's flowing out. Typically there's a crappie or two. Yep. Like I was saying, typically there's a crappie or two hanging out right there by the water. There he is, nice crappie. Back he goes. Meat's good. Let's see if we can drop back in there and get another one. This pink color and muddy... Oh, there was a bite. This pink color and muddy water, I tell you what, it works wonders for crappie and bluegill, both. I like the black color as well. The black is very good, but sometimes the pink is just a little bit better. Was that another bite? I don't know if that was a bite or not. Kind of hard to tell. Oop, something just flashed at my bait. I seen it. Could barely see my bait, but I seen something flash at it. it. Looked like a bluegill. Hopefully the camera picked that up. That was pretty cool to watch. Didn't get it though. Completely missed it actually. All right, no more bites right there. Let's cast out towards where we were catching them crappie earlier. Or I seen them fish move a second ago. Let's see if we can get something over there. Something moved by my bopper. Oh, had a bite and missed it. This poor water bug, I tell you what. Uh-oh, that's not a good thing. All right, got it fixed. There's a bit of a tangle. Had to fix that real quick. Line got wrapped up inside the reel. Almost was bad, but we got it fixed. See if we can get some more crappie or maybe a nice bluegill here. Drop the bait back down over here by this water. See if there's anything. Nothing. Hmm. Let's cast over by the uh, duck box to see if there's anything over there. A bit too close. Am I going to hook it? Nope, that's good. No bites there. Let's try on the other side of the duck box. 
You'd be surprised. Sometimes I'll, I'll uh, cast on one side and have no bites. I'll cast right on the other side of it and catch a fish almost instantly. It's, it's really odd how just that little, little four, maybe five foot difference can be so like detrimental, I guess you could say. Something just moved right there by them reeds. Let's see if we can get the bite. Just that little bit of a difference can be so detrimental to whether or not you get bit or not. It's what makes fishing fun, in my opinion. Just the little simplest differences. Like sometimes, you know, the swim bait, just a tad bit of a different color, a little bit of chartreuse on the swim bait or something can make all the difference in catching fish. Sometimes no chartreuse on the swim bait makes all the difference. Something I love about fishing is you never really know. Sometimes it could be one way and sometimes it could be completely different. Some days you can sit and catch 20, 30 fish on one bait. Yep, there's, oh damn it, came off. That was a good crappie. Just dropped it right down there and he bit. He didn't even pull my bobber under. I just seen my bobber set up real quick. It's like, that's not how that normally sits. And sure enough, there was a fish on it. I guess I should have let him have it just a little bit longer, maybe. Oh, well. At least we know what it was. Something that I absolutely hate about fishing sometimes is when you hook into something huge and you never actually get to see what it was. You know, if I'm going to lose something... I would at least like to know what it was if it's, you know, big enough. If it's like a monster carp that I accidentally snagged, I'm not going to be as mad as if it was like a 12-pound bass, but still, I would much rather be able to know that there's a 12-pound bass in the body of water than be chasing after whatever I accidentally hooked. And knowing my luck, it'd probably be a carp. Nothing right in here. Seems like the fish almost shut off now since I've come out here and started fishing. Haven't had any really good bites here lately. I'd say the bluegill are probably all over that shallow end down there. Just stacked up. Up there chilling out. But I don't want to go back there right now. Thinking that there's probably some uh, a good pocket of crappie that I can take advantage of. There's a bluegill came up and ate my bobber. Why won't you eat my bait? That's a pretty good bluegill too. Wasn't no super giant, but it was a pretty good sized one. So there is a few bluegill down here, at least one. I'd say there's probably quite a few around that. That tree, there usually is a lot of bluegill and hybrids hanging around that tree. It's just the trick of getting them to bite. That's the that's the main thing. Sometimes they will munch down on your bait, and sometimes they just won't want it at all. All right, let's drop it right back here and see if something might want it. You'd be surprised too, something else that uh, a lot of people don't do, and something that I have caught a lot of fish doing, is just dropping your bait down with a bobber, and then just letting it sit there and let the uh, the ripples make your bobber move. Sometimes that really super subtle movement like that right there, something bit it right there, pulled my bait down. Sometimes that super duper subtle movement that that water gives the bobber, that gives the bait, can be the ticket to catch and fish. I have had some big old fish do that to me. Or they won't really want it, you know, moving like you typically would give the bait action. But that little subtle ripple that the water makes, sometimes just the wind or sometimes, you know, like this here is sort of a uh, an aeration system or a spillway system, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes those little ripples, very subtle ripples, can be all the difference that you need in catching fish. And then some days, some days it won't even matter. Some days you can just cast it out and 
hop it along, bob it along, reel it. Oh, there's a bite. Sometimes it just does not matter one bit, but typically when it's windy out, I will try to let the, uh, the bobber and the wind do the action for me, just so I don't have to do much, you know, I could just kind of cast it out, let the wind take the bobber and let it just kind of flow along on the ripples. Caught a lot of big bluegill and had a lot of big crappie and bluegill both bite when you're doing that. It's a lot of fun. Because you don't really have to do anything. It's almost like you're nightcrawler fishing, but you're using soft plastic baits, which last a lot longer. Let's see if there's anything over here now. Perfect. Right up against that. Right up against it. I've had a lot of crappie come up and bite the bait when you're right up against that cover like that. They'll come up and smack it. And that's where you get them sometimes. There's something sitting right out there. I don't know if it's a stick or a fish. It's kind of hard to tell from here. It almost looks like a fish, but it might be a stick. It's just under the surface of the water. Like it's subsurface. I don't know what it is. It's not moving like a fish. It's just kind of sitting there. This one's making me think it's a stick. Don't know. Hard to say. Oh, there's a risky cast right up there. Yep, but I got a fish on, I think. I don't know. That looked like a fish bit it, but maybe it was a stick. I don't know. We might be just snagged. If it was a fish, I believe it came off. How am I snagged right there? I don't know. I should be able to come right off of that stick, but apparently not. There we go. Maybe. Yep, yeah, it was just a stick. Got caught on the old stick, old tree pounder. Perfect hook set, though, in that tree. make a cast over here by these duck decoys. Typically, there's usually a nice crappie or two that likes to sit by them ducks right on that ledge just off of the uh, little point that sticks out right here. Sometimes. Whether or not they're going to bite, that's an entirely different story, but they're usually sitting right there. Looks like something moved over there by that base of that tree that's in the water too. Probably a bass, I would, I would assume.